Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Mocking with WireMock.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about how we can start mocking our API request using WireMock.net. And in order for doing that, if you remember in our last lecture, we added the reference for the WireMock.net over here in our packages. Now we're going to start writing the code. So we'll see how it can be done much, much easily. So basically the idea or the pseudo code is this. We are going to create a server for WireMock.net, which is going to basically invoke the WireMock server itself on a specific URL. And then we are going to create the stub. So that's the place where we are going to see how we are going to create a mock request and mock response coming from this particular stub. That is what we are going to be doing in this particular lecture. So basically the stub is going to hold quite a lot of different properties. Basically it is going to hold things something like this. So we're going to say it is going to hold a path which is going to be any path for example you can create a product path or a test path whatever it is and then you're going to give a request type basically it could be a uh, get request or a post request or whatever it is so you can just say whatever that you are going to be doing based on the request and then you're going to also pass the header if you really wanted to and finally you can also specify the response for that particular request and that response can be a json response or it can be a normal text response or it can also hold some other type that you wanted to specify and also in within this response you can also specify the response type and what are the things that you wanted to specify so those things you can specify it over here on this particular stub operation so that is what is the whole idea or the pseudo code that we are going to be start building in this particular lecture. So basically we are going to start with a very, very small request operation and then we'll go bigger in this particular course. But for now, let's see how we can start invoking the WireMock server itself. So in order to do that, the first thing is I'm going to create a var server variable and I'm going to call what is called as the WireMock server. So this is the class that we need to invoke in order to start the WireMock server. So you can see that this is a fluent mock server, which means you can do some fluent operation. For example, if you just hit dot, you can see that you get a start method. You can also start this with an admin interface, or you can also start with an admin interface and read static mappings. So we'll talk about the admin interface and read ma static mapping later in this course. But for now, let's go with the smaller operation. Just nothing but the start operation. And within this start, you can see that there are different types of parameters that you can pass in. You can specify the port, you can specify the URL with the SSL operation or use HTTP2 to true or false. Or you can also specify a class type which is going to have the WireMock server settings. So you can specify all the settings from within this particular WireMock server itself. Or you can also specify the URLs or some other actions that you can pass in which is going to be like a delegate that you can pass in. But for now, I'm going to go with the first option, which is going to be the WireMock setting itself. So I'm going to say new WireMock setting, which is this one. And I'm going to pass the parameter into this particular settings. So I'm going to just open and close a braces there. And from here, I'm going to start you know what, we can also remove these settings from here, cut this up and put it as an using so that this can be even further reduced. You see that we can do this way. There we go. And now we can start setting the parameters here. So basically for this WireMock settings, you can see there are different types of properties available. So if I just do a control space in Visual Studio, you will see there are many different properties available in order to set the settings for the WireMock server itself. And one such setting that we are going to be looking at this time is going to be the URLs setting where you can specify a new of the string array of all the URL that you wanted to specify. So you can specify what are the different URL that you wanted to listen to while a request comes in for this mock server. So for example, I'm just going to say uh, it's going to be a HTTP colon double slash localhost of 80 80 or whatever so if i just specify this is going to be the url that i'm looking for so this is basically a string array that you can specify and then 
You can also specify many different types of properties as I told you. You can set the admin password, admin username. You can also specify the certificate settings, culture, custom matcher mappings and so many things that you can specify you can see there is a graphql schemas as well you can specify it over here i mean whatever that you can think of you can set it all over here you can specify the port specifically if you wanted to so all these are set over here so i'm just gonna get rid of this for now and now you can see that the visual studio is much intelligent enough to tell me there is some more option that you can specify with this new string of arrays over here so this is like grayed out over here because you can use what is called as an collection expression which is new to c sharp.net so you can use it as well so basically you don't have to specify with the new of string of array and then open a braces and then pass these values over here if you use string expressions basically it means that you can just specify a two double squares and I'm gonna cut this code and paste it. This is the code that is legal as well. So you don't have to specify all of these like how you did before. With Visual Studio, if I just do Control Z, and if I just go over here, and if I say use collection expression, you see that it just turns into a collection expression over here. You can specify that as well if you wanted to. Well, that's all about the Wiremox server itself. Now we have initialized it. The next operation we need to do is to create the stub, which is going to be accessed from my postman. So if I just go to my postman over here, I'm going to try to see if I could be able to run this code and if I could be able to perform any interaction with this local HTTP colon 8080. Now to do that, I'm just going to run this Wiremark net server over here and instantly, immediately you will see that the code execution just completes over here. The reason why is because this is a console application and you have not specified anywhere to keep this code executing. Well, not to do that operation in the c .net world, you have to do what is called as a read line or read key operation, whatever that you specify, something like this. So this way, this particular operation is gonna keep running until this key is being hit. So that is the way you can wait this code to be completely running until the whole operation is completed. So if I just do this time over here, you see that the code is not being terminated over here unless until you hit any key, something like this, see? So that is what I'm trying to do in this operation. So now if I execute this code, basically the Wiremox server is still up and running. And now if I go to the postman, and if I'm gonna say as HTTP colon double slash localhost of 8080, and if I hit send button, you will see that I'm gonna get a 404 exception. At the same time, I'm also getting some status message saying no matching mapping found. Well, guess what? If there is no such server, this message is not gonna come to you, right? Like this is like a status message. And this status message is coming because this is coming from the wiremark.net server itself. So let's say if I just stop this server and if I just hit this send button, you are gonna get this exception, like connection refused exception because there is no such server available. So basically you have invoked a mock server by just writing this simple line of code, wiremark server dot start and then settings and then you pass the URL, that's all. This has initialized a Wiremox server for you on this URL. And the next operation is we need to set a or create a stub. So I'm gonna create a stub and I will show you how easy it is in the Wiremox world. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use this server variable that we have already invoked for this Wiremox.net. I'm just gonna call server. And once I hit dot, you will see that there are many different methods being presented. It says add catch all mapping, add GraphQL schema, consumer, create client, and whatever, whatnot. But I'm just gonna use like a given when then operation. So I'm just gonna use a fluent given method. And within this given method, I can pass a request operation. So I'm gonna say a request. So if I just see uh, maybe capital RE, Q E S T. So if I just say request dot, and you see that the request is not coming up over here. So if I just hit control dot, it will bring you a wiremark dot request builders namespace. So we're gonna use this namespace, which will be added over here for us. And within this request, I'm going to say 
to create a request with a path so this is a fluent operation as i told you so this create method is going to bring you many different ways that you can do all these operations like put patch post get delete and whatever request type that you want to pass in you can do that as well so i'm going to say with path operation and within this path i'm just going to say slash test for now i'm just going to say like a test url and i'm going to say using a get request type so that is what i'm really looking for so if i get a request with the path of slash test using a get operation like a get request as we do in the postman something like this then you respond so i'm going to hit dot and i'm going to say you respond with a response like how you have a request you also can create a response and hit control dot and you can see that it's going to be a wire mock dot response builder coming in and within this response you're going to say create pretty much like how we did for the request and i'm going to say respond with a body and i'm going to say welcome to wire mock dot net test something like this right and that's it this is what i'm planning to respond this time i'm not going to add any response header or whatnot i'm just going to keep this thing as simple as possible and now if i try to run the test you see that the application is currently up and running which means the wire mock is also up and running and if i go to the postman this time and if i hit send you will get the same message that we got before because there is no slash test path that we have added so if i just add the slash test and if i'm also doing it with the get request type and if i send this time you will see that i'm going to get a welcome to wiremock.net test and this is coming because of the wiremock server is responding as for the particular request but if you try to do the exact same thing for example a patch operation or whatever you're going to get the same no matching mapping found because it is not mapped to the patch operation it's only mapped to the get request type so that's the reason why you're going to get this welcome to wiremock.net for the get operation so this way we can now 100 percentage ensure that our wiremock server is now up and running for the request that we are trying to make using the path that we are specifying and just to add a spice on this particular operation i can also now tell that i'm going to respond with the header as well so i'm just going to say dot and with there is something called as header and you can specify a specific header like one single header or you can also specify multiple different header so by this time while we say this particular header you can see that it has not got any header for the response for the test it only has a date server and transfer encoding but now i'm also going to say that i'm going to give a header with a content type as application json so i'm going to say content type application slash json so once i do this and now if i start running this wiremox server if I try to do the same get operation, you will notice that I'm also going to get a content type of application JSON because that is what we have specified in the header of this particular request. So this way we can see that we can start building our mock server much, much easily using wiremock.net with a lot of different operations moving forward. Hope you got the idea of how the wiremock.net starts building the entire operation of building a mock request and response for a specific request type with a header. Moving our next lecture, we'll see how we can add even further headers and also further stubbing operation for many different request type to see how we can mock them in a much better fashion.